canceling on the far side as we get ready to play high school football in section 84A. Low has the go-ahead from the official. He approaches the ball and he boots a squibber. It will be picked up. Oh, bobbled by Oslo. Recovers at the 20. Only the 25. Tried to make a cut. Slipped and fell at the 28-yard line. Smart play by Thief Fibber. They went with the squib quick. And uh, LeBiv Arneson or Erickson a chance to break one on you. So you squib it. 28-yard line is where the Otters will start this possession. And Willoughby will be dropped for a loss of three on the very first play of the defensive end, Josh Gallagher. It was all over it the moment the ball was handed off. Second down, 13. Otters on their own 25-yard line with the first possession of the ball game. They split the backs. And on second down, Brimhall will straight drop back to pass. Looks deep up the sideline. Erickson, and it is underthrown and almost intercepted. Now, Tim did have a step on, a step on Grease, who's got some good speed, but the ball was thrown inside. Well, in that particular play, it's early in the ball game, and their timing isn't good, but Brimhall uh, held on to it too long. He needs to let that thing go probably a second earlier, and then he's got a chance to reach here to have a step on Dries, but Dries has speed. He stayed right with Erickson. And the Otters now facing third down and 15. We'll send Erickson and Arneson wide to the near side. Long set back is Larrabee, and on third down, Brimhall will take the snap and drop straight back. A blitz coming. It's picked up. He rolls out of the pocket. Now throws on the run, and it's underthrown and incomplete. Trying to get it to Arneson at about the 40-yard line, and just underthrown, it will bring up a punting situation. If we were in that four-man line, took their linebacker on the right side, number 44, Peter Radnickel, and put him on the set, he's the one that flushed Grimma out of the pocket, and, and Grimma had to uh, throw on the run, and he threw it short. So Justin Arneson will punt the football. The honors three plays, minus three yards on their first possession. And the Powers will get some decent field position on the uh, punt return. Arneson's been kicked pretty well. He gets a high, short end over end kickoff. It is fairly on the run. And boy, you talk about a risky play made there. They do catch the ball, and it's down at the auto 40. Brad Bulger, the quarterback, will hand the ball off to Nick Dries. And Dries off the right side has five, maybe six yards. Quick hitter off that right side. And a good gain of about six. The Otters show their 4-4 four, four defense, and Pete Fever comes out off tackle. They line up in a full-house backfield. They take their right half back to the full back and lead interference. And Dries, number one, the left half back, that is Paul, up over that right side. Irving and Schoenhardt are the defensive ends. Johnson and Anderson are the defensive tackles. That's John Anderson. It's Dries breaking a tackle at the line of scrimmage. And Dries will take it the distance for a touchdown. He goes 40 yards for the score. And the key there was he was able to get past the first tacklers. That's right. He had great blocking on the line of scrimmage. He had to commit eight people to the run. And he had a scene. He did have... Uh, a little bit of contact about five yards into the defensive backfield, but then once he broke that, it was just a straight foot race to the end zone. So Dries gave him a 39 yard run on that to play for the touchdown. And now we'll see if the Powers can tack on the extra point out of uh, Bailey Nordine's foot, the senior. We'll kick it. 10-28 left in the opening quarter. The Fowler strike quickly. Two plays, 45 yards, and the score. And now here's the second, the extra point attempt, and the rush is on, and he kicks it wide to the left. Good outside rush by Chad Hoffman. And they failed to convert the point after in the score. On the cellular 2,000 score, Powers on the punt return to the 45-yard line, and then two plays, and Ryan Breeze, their stat back that we were talking about on the pregame show, picks up 45 yards on two carries, 39 on his second carry. And the Powers have the 6-0 lead here on the cellular 2,000 scoreboard, and now the kickoff coming. And they squib the first one. 
this time it will be a low line drive kick. Osland has it at the 17 yard line. Over to 20, 25, 30. 35, leaps the tackle, 40. To the 45, over the 48 for the 49 yard line. But flags are down. Flags are down. Good job by Osland. He's the guy on the left side back there and he took a line drive and did a nice job allowing his uh, teammates to do some blocking and he just fouled. But we're going to probably get a hold or an illegal block. And that appears to be the indication as they're going to back the Otters up. Penalty flag was at the 44-yard line. So they'll mark off yardage from there back to the 34. So the Otters will start there with their second possession of the ball game, trailing 6 0. There's penalty on either team. It is a 10 yard mark off. No wind here tonight. Very calm night. Very pleasant evening to watch football. And we've got another good crowd. Not quite the overflow crowd we've had in the past, but a good crowd nonetheless. Wide right comes Titus Christian. Otters have the I formation behind Brimhall. And on first down, the handoff, and Larrabee will not get away. Larrabee pounding his way for a yard, and a tough yard it was. Steve River in that five-man front does a lot of different movements on the uh, defensive line. They will really shoot the gap, and they are very quick. And it's going to be a difficult task here for that line to uh, block them because they're not sure if they're going to go left gap, right gap, and uh, if you've got the quickness to do that, you can really mess the running game up. Brandon Osland was in at the running back spot along with uh, Larrabee Karst. Big Karst is on the sideline with a bad ankle. He's got it wrapped pretty well, but he's been running on it and will play tonight, but probably not as much as we've seen him out there. Second down and nine, Grimhall to throw. He steps up, fires, ball is caught. Artis on the sideline. Trying to shake the tackle, he can't do it. He twists and turns out to the 48-yard line, and he has the first down. Great timing pattern by the Otters. Uh, Brimhall goes into about a five-step drop. Arneson runs down 10 feet, or 10 yards, turns around, comes back to the ball, the ball's there. Give him a 14-yard gain on that play, and the ball spotted now on the Otter 49. Nine minutes, 20 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Christensen and Erickson will be the wide receivers on first down from the 49-yard line. There will be the lone setback. Had a nice night running the football last week as the Otters had over 270 yards rushing. And on first down, Wimhall takes the snap from Rudnick. They'll run a little delay to Larrabee. Larrabee has room over the 50 to the 45. And down he goes at the 42-yard line. And a nice game. And Gallagher, the defensive end, went right after Grimhall, and, and that allowed Larrabee to escape. That's right. They sent uh, Gallagher, their defensive end, in on a crash, thinking it was pass. And instead, it was a little delay. And Larrabee did a nice job once he got the football. He realized the defensive end is the one that vacated. So rather than go up the middle, he broke it to the outside and found great running in A nine-yard gain for Larrabee. Second down and one from the Fowler, 42-yard line. The honors in enemy territory for the first time in this game. And the handoff, fake handoff. Wimhall will keep it, and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39 yard. I think it's a different look that time, Raj. It certainly was. I was watching the Larrabee because I was sure it was going to be a pullback dive, and all of a sudden, Wimhall kept it. But he did get the first down. Three-yard gain for Wimhall. Like a double wing kind of a uh, set that time. Well, they, not a true wing set, but they will come out of a dive option with that also. And on first down from the 39, Christensen and Erickson go wide to the left side, and Larrabee is the lone setback in this situation. Brimhall has thrown three passes, completed one. They were left on the option. Brimhall will pitch it out. Larrabee trying to go wide, is hit, and gets away from the first tackle, and ahead to the 36-yard line for a gain of three. But the Fowler is showing that good speed, Roger, to get to the football on that play. They certainly did. They came with the uh, lead option, and Brimhall got stretched out quite a way before he made the pitch to Larrabee, the number 35 foot Jewel is a guy that got the first hands on Larrabee, and he slowed him down enough for his teammates to get there. Second down and seven, ball spotted on the power 36. It's 6 nothing. Three Fever Falls leads on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. 7.15 to play here in the first quarter. Two receivers wide right this time on second and seven. Quick little down and out route to Arnes, and he turns it up field by 30. And ahead to the 
25 yard line for another first down. Excellent job. Arneson being the guy in the slot, went down three yards, broke it to the outside. Once he caught the ball, then he stopped and came right back up against the seam. Now we have a flag down back uh, in the area of offensive holding. Back to the 41 yard line where the flag was dropped and they are going to indicate holding on the otter, so that will take away that nice pickup of 10 yards by Arnie and the completion from Brim Hall and it will mull. And the holding was 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now that hurts. So the honors now from the 49-yard line, two receivers right, Brim Hall to throw. Pressure, rolling, looking for room. He gets away somehow. Cuts it back at the 50, 45, 40. And up ended at the 35, ahead to the 33-yard line. And what a great run by Ben Brim Hall. How he got out of there is beyond me. He had a sea of white shirts surrounding him, and it looked like he was going to go down, and all of a sudden he broke out of the pack, and he got up field and made a nice... The Otters take the snap, give it off to Larry. Big hole, first down to the 25 and down to the 24-yard line, and what a nice job up front by the line opening that hole for Larry. It certainly was. They ran the fullback blast over that left side where uh, you've got great blocking and Johnson and Morgan... And you lead and where they are the setbacks, and they are split behind Brim Hall on first down from the power of 23. Then turns and gives it off to Larrabee, trying to pick his way through the hole, and he'll fight and score him ahead of the 21-yard line. Tough two yards for Brian. That's all it was. The followers in that 5-2 defense, they did not clear the hole on that right side. They created a pile, and when Larrabee got there, he had nowhere to run. He tried to bounce off and go to the inside, but it was only good for two yards. And that's because Ben Myers was there, the middle linebacker, who wrapped him up after a gain of two. Ball on the Fowler, 21, 5.15 left, first quarter. Jim Erickson, wide to the right side, Nick Dries picking him up. Again, split backs, and on second down and nine, Brimhall will throw a pump fake to Erickson. Wants to go to the corner, Erickson is there, there's traffic defensively, and it's almost picked off. As the safety came over to help Zach Olson, and he had the ball in his hands, but couldn't hold it. Yes, he did. Erickson, of course, is been on to be able to use his body to allow him to go up and grab those in traffic. But credit to Zach Olson, he had a great read on the football when he stepped in front of Erickson and went out there and uh, could have come down with the interception. Uh, ben Brimhall was hit as soon as he uh, released that ball, too. There was a good rush on him there. And, you know, Ben does that very well, Roger. Right? He stands in the pocket and he'll take the punishment. And, you know, as, as Ben's not a huge muscular guy, but he takes the punishment. Yep. He's got nice size, though. He sees over people. Third down at eight. From the 21. Good protection. Ben's got time. A lot of time. Over the middle. Arnie makes his cut. It's intercepted at the three. Picked off by the Fowlers at the three-yard line. The ball was thrown behind Justin. Rimmel had plenty of time that time, and Arneson was running a close pattern, and the ball was thrown behind Arneson. He over comes up with the interception. And the ball spun around the two-yard line. His knees must have gone down at the two. So we'll see what the Fowlers are left to do from deep in their own territory. And on first down, they will get nothing as they try to pound it off the left side of their offensive line, and it was Lowe carrying the ball and Rednick making the tackle for no gain. The first two plays that the people who had the ball on offense, they ran the power play over the right side. This time they opened up with the power play off the left side, and the Otters were right at home and gave up zero yardage. Rednick and Kildy in the middle defensively, linebacker Carson Erickson on the outside. Then you got Hopper and Arneson and Osland in the secondary and the handoff goes up the gut. And it's the throwback out to about the six-yard line on that play. And it will bring a third down. Once again, a four-house backfield. Some people call that the straight key, some call it the split key. But the uh, people of the line really gets nice splits, which forces your linemen out further to cover them. And then they use that quickness to get up into the hole very quickly. Adam Havlin was the ball carrier that time. It is third down and six with three. 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. Bolger will pitch it out to Drees. He cuts it back. He's hit off balance, still on his feet, but he got about a yard, and then the Otters were able to uh, gain tackle him and drive him back. Then mark him down at the seven, and it will be from bring up a, a punting situation for a thief Good defensive effort by the Otters. 
Free Trevor comes out with a dive option and they get the ball in the hands of Ruiz, who's their most dangerous runner. But because of gang tackling, the Otters were able to hold them. The guy that came off the bottom of that stack was number 75, Jonathan Anderson. It was a very nice year on that defensive line. Three minutes left, first quarter. Otters trail 6-0 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. And the punt will come out of the end zone. And it is a punt toward the sideline. Gets a good bounce and goes out of bounds at the 43. But the Otters have glitches on first down. Osland and Larrabee will split backs. And Larrabee takes the hand off, breaks the tackle, fights forward inside the 40 into the 38-yard line. Great effort by Larrabee. Running from that right halfback spot, he takes it around that left end, made the first guy miss, and then he punished the second guy that came in on the tackle. They mark him down at the 39-yard line, second down and six. Two and a half minutes to play in this opening quarter. It is 6-0. Pete Fogel Falls leads it on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Tomorrow, the final game of the season for the Spartan football team there in Grand Rapids at Itasca Community College tomorrow. No radio on that one. We instead are bringing you the soccer playoff game between Fergus Falls and Elk River. More on that in a moment. Rudnick snapped the ball and started blocking. The ball was loose. Nobody else moved, but if that center snaps the ball, it's live and it's recovered by the Prowlers. That is the strangest play that we've seen this year. <laughs> and you call it right, Craig. Rudnick snapped the football and he came out of his stand. And in the process, three defensive linemen went across when the ball went squirting on the ground and they jumped on it. And Peter Rodnick, he recovered that fumble and that's the second honor turnover. And that was a strange looking play, wasn't it? Just uh, everybody else standing there and Caleb blocking and the ball lying on the ground and right up the middle over the 40 to the 42 and pushing forward trying to get more. There's a big fullback and that was Ben Myers, the 205 pound junior. He picked up five hard yards. He's a little trap play on that. They take their right guard and trap down on that stack on the uh, right side of the defensive line. And then they run that pullback right up over the center and very successfully for six yards. And that uh, brings up second down and four after that six-yard game by Myers. Now their main pullback at the start of the year, Mike Bowers, was out with a knee injury. But he is supposedly available tonight. But I don't know that we'll see him. Breeze will be stopped for no gain as Pulse came up and closed that hole. And it will be third down and four. The Powers play up power football that he was able to score on in the first possession, and the others have learned how to defend that. David Carson, the outside linebacker, came up and made the stop. Third down, and about five to go for the first. Under a minute to play in this opening quarter. Otters trailing 6-0 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. And the handoff to Dries, the second man throw, and he breaks through into the secondary. Still on his feet, the rule is a knee dip touch at the 47, like a corner. They, they ended up running it out of the left halfback spot rather than the wing, but they ran a misdirection to the left side and brought Dries back to the right side, and they did a nice job of blocking at the point of the pack. Actually, it uh, looked like it might have even been not executed very smoothly back there between uh, the quarterback and the running backs. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of congestion. 37-yard line with 30 seconds left in the quarter. And the handoff straight up the gut. Haviland takes it to the 45-yard line for a gain of a couple, but the Otters are there to stop him. Linebacker Rudnick again making the uh, play. That fullback has great speed. He comes up in there, and he hits that hole very quickly, and Rudnick had to stop first the line of scrimmage from his linebacking spot to make the tackle. And that's going to be the end of the second down at eight for the three from the Falls Prowlers as we start the second quarter of play here at the Curtis Falls football field. He'll pitch it out, trying to get Breeze wide. He'll cut back and will get a couple of yards, but again, the Otters pursue well, and they certainly did that time as Cannon Kildy came up with the stop. Well, the key thing on that quick pitch out is that your defense in the end did not allow the ball to be hooked, and that was Charlie Schoenhardt. He fought his block all the way to the sideline, and that frees up Cannon Kildy to come in on the 
suit and make the tackle. And it brings up third down and six now for the Prowlers. They are known as a rushing team. They have two backs over 600 yards this year. Drees and low. And now they're going to throw it. And the pass is high and incomplete. Trying to get it out of the backfield to low. And just off his fingertips and incomplete. And he was open. Not a bad route. No, a very good route. What they did is they took their tight end, put him on a deep route. They won him 10 yards and broke him off to the right. And then brought the... Uh, player out of the backfield into the pass and the uh, quarterback wasn't able to put the ball where he was supposed to. So it is now fourth down and six and it will be a punting situation as well with drop back to kick. Arneson awaits it back at the honor 10 yard line. Good snap right back to Lowe. He'll get the kick off toward the sideline and out of bounds. Way out of bounds. Well that's not going to be Okay, they were all going to, I think they're pretty gracious there. So back to the 24-yard uh, line, 22 this year. They were tight with DL at halftime last week. Well, 7-6, I think it was. 7-6. And then got beat 26-7 uh, to seven or 27-6, to six, something like that. Then ball, big rush, and he'll hand the ball off to Lavi, and Lavi will spin forward over the 30 to the 33-yard line for a gain of 8 yards on that play. That was over running that center. Exactly. They came on a stunt that time with their right linebacker, and he actually got too deep in the offensive backfield, and Brimhall was able to make the handoff, and uh, Larrabee had nothing to daylight once he received it. In the backfield, and they run out of the wishbone with Karst at the fullback spot, and Larrabee and Oslin to the running backs. And the handoff goes to Karst, pounding it up the middle, and he'll be, I think, short of the first down. I'm not sure. Well, let's see where they mark it. As, uh, it's going to be tight. They gave me a first down. And they did. First down. High running by David Kauf. He's up there as a uh, fullback in the wishbone and running on a sprained ankle. Chad Hoppin has not been in the backfield too often. He's out there now, but Chad with a uh, hip flexor, the, the uh, same injury that Chris Carter's been battling. Same type of injury. So Coach Mike is trying to rest these guys and not make them go both ways. Them all at the line of scrimmage on first down from the 35. Where he cuts it back to the 40 and over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Following the block of Ross Johnson and also Caleb Rudnick. There we did a real nice job, but he was supposed to go out wider. That's an off tackle play that played half that pass, but he saw there was a seam right up over Johnson and, and Rudnick, and he turned it up field and picked up great yardage on first time. I guess there's a fine line there when you, as a coach, isn't there? You, you want your back to go where he's supposed to go, where the play is designed to go, but you also want them to be able to instinctively make that cut if they see it opening. There's Larry off the right side, first down, and he explodes for about 12 more after getting the first down ahead to the 45-yard line, and that's a gain of 14. Right, Larry is playing a great football game. The running responsibility is in his hands with injuries to Hoffman and Karst, and that time he broke a tackle after he gained 10 yards. And They spotted on the 46-yard line of the Prowlers with 9.15 to play in the quarter. Split backs, and again, Larry to the outside. Slips out of an ankle tackle, puts a head down, rolls over a defender, and takes it to the 37-yard line. And that is another gain of about eight yards on that play. And Larry, he may need a breather before too long. <laughs> Brian Larry came to play. He uh, stepped out of the tackle, uh, the first tackle, then he busted the second tackle and ran right through the guy and uh, ended up picking up nine yards on the play. Nine-yard gain, nine minutes to play. Second down and about one. Ball at the 42-yard line of Thief River. Fowlers lead it 6-0 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Levy, room to the outside to the 35, and then cut down at the 34-yard line. And that was just a nice open field tackle. Yep, it was. And the guy that made the tackle was Nick Reed. He's the guy that's the defender out there on Tim Erickson. Now, if Larry would have had two more steps, 
Tim Erickson was right there to throw the block on Breeze, but uh, he couldn't do it, otherwise it would have been crooked. 34-yard line now is where the ball is spotted. The Thief River has run, has now run 22. This will be their 23rd play. They've had the ball twice as long as the Fowlers, but the Fowlers have the only points. Grim Hall handing the ball off. Larvey again, and he ran up against uh, his, the backs of his blockers and then took it around the uh, blockers for another yard or two. And just doing another a nice job running the football as he picks up about seven more. Tim Erickson wide to the near side. Hoffman is back there in the backfield now with Larravee on second down. And it is Larravee again up the middle, and he'll get close to the first down as he penetrates the 25-yard line. I think he'll be just shy of first down yardage. Steve Ferber that time jumped into a six-man front with two linebackers, and they're trying everything right now to stop the Otter rushing game and uh, the otters keep clicking it off third down and less than a yard and this is something we've talked about with phil link also throughout this year the scouting report has shown hey this team throws the football but they're very capable of moving it on the ground and we saw it established last week in that second half at morris and here in the first half against the river backs are split erickson wide to the near side grim hall on the quarterback keeper ahead to the 23 yard line and a first down for the otters with seven minutes to play in the opening quarter excellent call by coach frank in that six-man line there is not out of the pocket under some pressure and a passing situation earlier in this half christensen wide left on first down the otters will keep it on the ground where are they coming wide to the 20 15 and down to the 10 yard line for another first down 13 yard gain it's first and goal good running by larvey this particular possession has been the larvey show the whole way and he has not disappointed the otters what's happening is that uh, he is crashing their ass and coaches picked that up, so it's an easy block on the end. And then Levy has enough speed to turn the corner. He has 87 yards rushing already, and we're not at halftime yet. And it is first down and goal. Ball just inside the 10-yard line, six and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Otters trail 6-0 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Larrabee with the handoff inside the five, and down to about the three-yard line. It'll be second and goal, and there's no stopping by Larrabee. He's running left half back, right half back, wherever he's lining up. They're calling his number. And he's delivering. Second down goal from the three. And the Otters have done it all on the ground on this drive. Grimhall has thrown four passes, completed one for 14 yards. And another 10-yard completion called back. Osmond and Larrabee the setbacks. Grimhall turns, gives it off to Larrabee, through the hole, left side, and into the end zone for the touchdown. And this game is tied at six. Great effort by Brian Larrabee, that time the right half back. He ended up coming up over his uh, left guard, Ross Johnson, and his left tackle, Andrew uh, Morgan. And he found a seam, and once he got on the defensive backfield, then he just took it upon himself to cut his way into the end zone. That's called smelling the goal line. Larrabee with a three-yard run for the touchdown. And the extra point kick for the lead now with Luke Braxton on to try to split the uprights, which he has done consistently all year. The only miss this year was on a bad snap. And he is true on this one, and with 5.44 to go, the score now on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. It went on sportsmanlike penalty, and they will now kick off from the 25-yard line versus the 40-yard line. Well, Luke Traxton might be able to reach the end zone from here, too, watch. Now he booms it, and we've got another penalty flag. Otters now were offside on that one. Move it back five yards. That's why they sometimes lose their hair and sometimes get gray. <laughs> now here's Jackson now from the 20-yard line. Line drive kick, and it will be fielded by Grease at the 21. 25, 30, 35, 40, and down at the 42. Great coverage by the uh, kickoff team. We end up with number 46, Reed Motter, in on the tackle. He's uh, played very well on special teams this season. Well, we'll spot him at the 41-yard line, and he and Jake Weiser have been 
two pretty impressive special teams players. From the five minutes and the 38 seconds left now in the first half, the Otters lead 7-6 on the cellular 2,000 square foot. Powers to the air, wide open, the tight end drops the ball. At the 30-yard line, all oh, he had Brett Johnson open. He had Brett Johnson open, and Brett Johnson had the ball delivered in his hand, and Brett Johnson got the football. How disappointing for both the quarterback and the receiver. Huh. Lone coverage on the part of the Otters. Second down, 10 from the 41, and the Otters coaching staff with a collective sigh of relief on the sideline. Well, that was a surprise call on first down. Surprise call, but well executed except for the catch. And a T formation on second down and 10. And they'll hand the ball off to the stand. He is grabbed from behind by Hopper, who drags him down at the 24-yard line. That's a play that Green scored on in the first quarter, and uh, they get a ton of blockers up between the tight end and the tackle. And if there's a hole there, this Breeze can do lots of damage. 94 yards rushing for Breeze, and he's picked up 74 of those 94 yards on two carries. Now you got to realize that Hoppenham is the corner on the right side. He had to come all the way across the field to make that tackle. An outstanding effort by Hoppenham. 24 yard line of the autos on first down. This time it's the handoff to the fullback Myers, and Myers is driven back. Ross Johnson and Chad Hoppenham both in there. On the tackle, and John or Dennis, no, let's see, Caleb Rodnick, the other one who uh, was in on the play. Well, yeah, John Anderson was the guy who had his hands on him first and wasn't able to bring him down. And so the other teammates jumped in there and held the big pullback for a three-yard game. Second and seven with four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Honor seven, power six on a cellular 2,000 scoreboard. And again, that T formation. And the handoff, and right up inside the 20-yard line, and driven back by John Anderson and Caleb Rudnick on that uh, carry was the fullback Havland, and he uh, paid the price for those two yards. He certainly did. That is a pitcher tackle. That's what you put on your training field. Rudnick from his linebacking spot made excellent contact, good arm wrap, and put him on his back. Third and about six now, with under four minutes left in the half. Now the under defense trying to come up big here. Now let's see if they go to the air. They fake twice, so they hand it up, and it is low, and low is all down. And he will not get the first down. Charlie Schoenhart did a nice job coming up with the tackle. Charlie did an outstanding job. The Cowboys came out with a misdirection play, and a little counter play. They, they take it to Breeze, and low gets it from his right halfback spot. Here they go in this half, and a fourth down and four. Let's see what the Prowlers do here. They have pretty much stayed on the ground. They've thrown two passes, incompleted both. And it's going to be the second man through. Dries is going to be hauled down. He'll be close to the first down. Ross Johnson made the stop. And I've seen no indication that he's ahead of the 13-yard line. He does have the first down. They want to do their bread and butter play. It's that second man through over the right tackle. Dries being the left half back, and he follows his right half back and fullback up in between the right tackle and the right tight end. First down at the 13-yard line, back down to the 310 mark. And now Bulger will throw, and he's got his man open, five-yard line, and a touchdown. And it was low again out of the backfield. He has been open on that little uh, flat pass, and he takes it in from 13. Excellent call by the Fowlers. Of course, the others are disappointed. They didn't hold on fourth down. And so rather than come out and rattle at the Otters, they went to the air. Now, we've seen that same pattern four times, and it's been open every single time. And this time they went to the short receiver, and the ball was caught, and it's a race in the end zone. Six points for three. 
Brian Lowe on the receiving end of the pass from Brad Bolger, using their second timeout on this possession before they try to execute the two-point conversion attempt here. They have taken a 12-7 lead on a 13-yard pass play to Brian Lowe from Brad Bolger. And now they wind up in the I formation. Drees is the deep back. He'll take the handoff, and off the left side he goes, and he scoots in for the two points. So with 3.07 remaining in the first half, the digital service offers exceptional clarity. And listen to some of the features. Security of calls means your conversation can't be listened to and your number won't be stolen. No annual service contracts. Listen to the difference. Contact Steve Ripley at Park Region Telephone, 736-2887. At Park Region Telephone, your wireless north authorized dealer for digital PCS. Justin Arneson with the return up over the 35 and ahead to the 41 yard line where the Otters will get possession with three minutes remaining in this first half and I believe all three of their timeouts left too. I believe you like that good job by the kickoff receiving team. Arneson got, finally got his hands on the football and he did bring it almost to midfield. Gives the Otters a great field position. Well, resting at the Otter 41 yard line. Three minutes remaining in the first half. It is 14 to 7. It was 6 nothing Fowlers at the end of the first quarter. Keith River has eight points here in the second. Grim Hall to throw. Stands in. Deep upfield. Arneson up for the catch. He couldn't hold it. And we've got a penalty flag as Josh Raskovich. When he uh, got up, he laid it that the ball had not been caught. He kind of came down and on top of uh, Arnie with both hands on his helmet. And they called that taunting, and we get a misconduct call. Great pattern by Harrison. And the Brim Hall, once again, was under tremendous pressure from the right defensive end. They hung in there and threw the bomb. Arneson went up to the top of his jump and tried to catch it, but was not able to come up with it. Well, all five of the Keith River coaches out there on the field asking for an explanation on that. And he uh, was going to get a personal foul for getting up there. And I think it was just he was pretty emotional and excited about it. He may have even kind of stumbled over on and fell on top of him. And I don't know that he was trying to do anything uh, uh, derogatory at all to justify it all either. I think that he, what he did is he went up and made a great defensive play. And you, know, you called it. He, he was excited. And yet he did come down and, and taunt Justin Arneson, who was laying on the, on the ground. So that personal foul will be marked off to the 44-yard line of the Fowlers. Now the Otters will get an opportunity here to uh, get some good field position after that penalty. The first one of the half against the Fowlers. And at the 44 with 2.53 to go and three timeouts remaining, you can afford to be creative with your offense, run some plays here, you've got plenty of time. Yeah, exactly. We have 2.53 on the clock and of course the others uh, have established. I don't know if there are any two more active coaches other than Phil Link and Jeff Mum as far as keeping an ongoing conversation with the officials. They're both pretty active out there. Here's Brim Hall under center. On first down from the 44, a straight drop back. Has time. Looks, fires. Ball is caught by Erickson at the 35. He'll be just short of the first down. Good timing pattern. Erickson being the wide out on the left side. Right along the sideline. He goes down and looks up. Right on the 35-yard line. Amser will be battling perhaps again before this season is said and done with the postseason play coming up. Very possible that they would meet another time. On second and short. Grim Hall, quarterback keeper, and he breaks through to the 30, 25, to the outside, gets a block, cuts inside it to the 15, and it's a first down for the Otters deep in power territory. Oh, what a great call by Brim Hall. That had to be called at the line of scrimmage from my batting point because he just saw a weakness in there. And we are a game. And here's a first down at the 15-yard line. Grim Hall under center. Turns, gives it off to Lurvey. Coming wide, gets to the 10, and then he's stood up and driven back as he gets well. He may not have reached the 10. Very close to it. Cut hard tapping by Thief of the Falls. The three safety number 15, Zach Olson, came up and uh, put a great arm wrap on Lurvey. That puts Lurvey over 100 yards on the night. I've got him at 101 for the night. 
125 left here in the first half. Otters with three timeouts remaining. Ball on the Fowler 11-yard line. It is second down and about six. Backs are split. Brim Hall to throw. He pumps once. Now looks for Arnett and picked off on the sideline. There's room up the sideline and returned over the 30 to the 33-yard line. And that was a pretty good play by Josh Riscovich there. The guy who was penalized Raj just a few minutes ago comes up with the big intercept. He just kind of laid back. He read that extremely well. What they wanted to do is take Arnett and, and go right into the end zone and then run to the uh, sideline. Then I'll stop and fortunately they didn't give up six points. Because a lot of times when a play like that you give up six. So that's the third time in this first half that the Otters have turned the ball over. Twice on interceptions, once on a fumble. And on first down, the Lair will carry the football. And he'll pick up about five out to the 37, maybe the 38 yard line. Give him six on that first down carry. He come in here and really established the run. And the primary play, he was off tackle, left off tackle, right. And the Otters haven't figured out how to stop that play at this point. Under 40 seconds to play here in the first half. They hand off off the right side. Greaves with good room up over the 50 to the 47 yard line. And a big run there by Ryan Greaves, or by Mick Greaves. Tim Erickson has to come from his right linebacking spot on the opposite side and come up with a tackle. If Tim doesn't make the tackle, we've got lots of green grass in front of him. 15 yard gain for Greaves, 7 yard line of the honors, and the Prowlers have a first down and 10. They are out of timeouts. Let's see what they decided to do here. Bolger, the quarterback, has only thrown the ball three times. Has completed one for 13 yards. It was a touchdown. He's going to throw. Throws deep up the sideline, and it is almost picked off. It was underthrown and incomplete. But the passing package is not their main thing, that's for sure. Well, there's no question about that, but they use it very effectively because they are, they are throw it when we expect it, and they were able to put six points on the board with the pass, so uh, they use it according to what their strengths are. And I think the coaching staff wanted an interference call on Erickson that time, but they were just the receiver, and Erickson got the feet tangled up, and the ball wasn't even close to it. Well, they were jostling for the football. Right top, and another chance at it on the corner as he tried to catch up with the ball, which was underthrown intended for the receiver. On second down at 10, they'll go second down through. Ball is stripped away, and the Otters pick it up at the 40. It's Justin Arneson. He's off to the races, and Justin Arneson has done it again. He picked that ball up at the 40-yard line, and he goes 60 yards for the touchdown. It's uncanny how he does that. What a turn of event. Unbelievable. Now, we've got a flag that's coming in here. And I don't know what we're looking at here. But hopefully it's not going to take the points off the board. The guy that and Justin Parnison came from his free safety spot, picked it up off the cone, and raced up that left sideline. And naturally, there isn't going to be too many people that's going to catch him from behind. And it is against the Prowlers, so it is declined, and it is a 60-yard touchdown return by Justin Arneson, picking up that fumble. And there was nobody there on the other sideline to even run with him to the end zone. Everybody had to come from the middle of the field and behind him, and nobody was going to catch Justin. And now Ben Grimhall decides to use a time on a two-point conversion attempt. Well, the others will spread the field. They'll bring one defender out of the picture as they send Erickson wide to the left side. And Hoppen and Larrabee are the setbacks, and Grimhall gets them to do a come offside, and they'll move the ball half the distance to the goal line. I feel that's what they were trying to do the first time they were out there, and they realized they weren't going to do it. They had the timeouts, and so Bernhardt, so they must have assessed. There must have been two penalties. I don't know. The one was assessed on the extra point. So they're at the one-yard line, or inside the one, and where they is stopped. Boy, I would have 
would have been very confident with the Otters in that situation on that uh, back last, but he does not get in and give the Prowlers credit as the offensive line seed wasn't enough as the Prowlers prevent that two-point conversion and therefore maintain the lead at 14-13 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Okay. Jackson will kick. Luke's kick will be fielded by Lowe at about the 5 to the 10, 15, and trying to come across the field with it. He won't even get to the 20. And with seven seconds remaining here in this opening half, Powers will bring the offense on the field for one second. And the quarterback will uh, take the knee, drop back a couple of yards, lose a couple of yards. And that is the end of this. And then the Otters, Justin Arneson, picking up a loose ball, going 60 yards with a fumble recovery with 12 seconds left to make it 14-13. Here comes Brian Lowe on the return of the second half opening kickoff and he is stuck and dropped back at the 23 yard line of the Otters again with some very good special teams coverage. They certainly did. That time Cannon Kelly who was a mick and half leading by one 14-13 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Otters at Bemidji on Wednesday in their finale and the second man through with the football and Karst will wrap him up. Drees will get to the 26 yard line for a gain of about three. They came seven. Ball on the 26 yard line for Thief River. They have used that uh, full house backfield the entire uh, game, much of the game. Up the middle it's Havlin the fullback and he'll get the first down as he pounds to the 34 yard line. Good run by Havlin. Here's the key right now is the fact that the Otters have had time to talk about what's happened in the first half. And if they key too much on that off tackle play, they're going to come back to Havlin with that fullback dive and make the Otters stop that also. And Mum is one of those coaches who does a good job adjusting as the game goes on, too. If, if Phil Link adjusts, he'll adjust again. First down at the 34-yard line. This time it is the second man through again and out to the 36, maybe the 30 seven yard line goes uh, Nick Drews for a gain of about two or three yards. Right now I think the challenge has been made that Nick Drews is not going to have 113 yards in the second half. So that time the Otters did a great job of stopping that off tackle play. Ten and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Prowlers with the first possession of the second half sitting with a second down at eight from their own 36 yard line. Up under center is Brad Bolger who threw four passes is in the first half. A little dump pass over the middle. It's caught out to the 45-yard line, and that's the tight end, Brett Johnson, who dropped that wide-open pass earlier in this game. He picks up about nine yards on that one. A little fake to the fullback first, and you sit there, and Bulger hits the tight end on an easy release. Cannon Kildy came up with a tackle, but he also came up with a sore arm in the process. Hmm. A gain of nine and a first down at the 45. Prowlers again with that full house backfield as we hit the 10 minute mark and the first man through is Myers a fullback and he twists and turns uh, off hits into the uh, hotter territory to the 48 yard line for a gain of about six. Good first down play. They uh, take the flow to the right side then they take that fullback up over almost like a slant. He takes one step to his right and then he cuts it back to the back side and if it's over flows he He's going to find running room. Second down and four. Now the ball inside Otter territory with this first possession of the half. And a play action pass. That same down and out pattern. It is caught. And Lowe takes it inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. We've had trouble covering him out of the backfield. They certainly have. They, that's, we've seen two pass patterns by Thief River. One was the dump pass. And then we've seen this pattern about four times. And uh, you have to be able to cover that back coming out of the backfield. 12 yard gain. Ball now at the Otter 37. 9 29 to play. Third quarter. It's 14 13. Thief River Falls leads on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Bolger gives to Drees, and Drees has wrapped up, kept the legs going, got to the 34, but Rudnick was there to meet him, and he didn't go much further after the contact was made there. He impressed me, though. He bounced off that hard hit by Karsten and Rudnick, and he almost kept his balance and bounced to the outside. 
Three-yard gain for Drees, second down seven from the 34-yard line. Fowler's up with a full house backfield again. Drees is the left half, and low the right half. This time it is low, and he is hit and dropped in the backfield. Rudnick had the first shot at him. He couldn't get him, but Ross Johnson did. He tried a little misdirection play, and Rudnick going in on the start, almost overran the play, but was able to get a piece of him, and then Ross Johnson came in and made the attack. For a loss. It is third down and 10 now at the 37-yard line. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to play, third quarter. Otters had the ball for about six minutes on their scoring drive tonight. Thief River is headed for three and a half at the start of the second half. Bolger's throw is caught by Drees and then an open field tackle by Hoppin and immediately, and it will bring up fourth down and five. Drews came out of the uh, backfield from his left halfback spot. He was open, and Bolger hit him. But hopping and it was right there and really leveled into the ground. So Drees gets five yards to the 32. It is fourth and five, and the clock ticking down toward the eight-minute mark. They're in four-down territory here at the 32 of the Otters. Drees lines up as the single setback. They have two men in the slot to the right. They're going to run a little flare pass out here. Oh! And Cars to win was a hit. They tried to get it to Lowe, or to uh, Myers, rather, and the ball was overthrown, and Cars was right on him. He certainly was. What they tried to do was run a little screen out here. They had the two receivers out as blockers, and then they take the guy out of the back. Cars spread it, and as the ball is in the air, he's right there to make the hit. The guy is fully extended trying to catch the football when David hits him. That was Brett Johnson, a tight end who was lined up at that slot. That's the kind that you set to music if, if you're NFL films, you know. Yep, you've got it. Backs are split. Brim Hall hands it off to Larrabee, and he is collared and thrown for a loss back at the 31-yard line. And some fired-up defensive play there by the Prowlers. And that's the man who stepped in for the injured Josh Gallagher, John Cox, who made the stop. John Cox is the right defensive end, and they really crashed their ends hard. Uh, they could put him through that gap between the tight end and the tackle. That time, he did not get a, any blockers on him when he met Larrabee in the back. Second down and 12 from the 30-yard line. Again, split backs. Arneson wide to the left side. Brim Hall under center. And Brim Hall will drop back to throw. Arnie with a button hook action. Has it at the 41. Is pushed back as he comes down to the ball. Lowe made the tackle on him. At the 41-yard line, he will be short of the first down by about two yards. A good timing pattern. Arneson gets down about 10 yards. Now on the next level, what you want to do is you want to get two yards beyond the chain and then come back and catch the ball and you got your first down. But that comes as you play more football. Third down and a yard for the Otters. Ball resting on their own 41 with six minutes and 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. Thief River 14. The Otters 13 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. And Erickson will go wide to the right side. Brim Hall sets him up with Larrabee and Hoppin in the running backs. And on third down and one, it's that quarterback keeper and Brim Hall to the 45. And that play has been there all night. It certainly has. It, Brim Hall is a big, strong quarterback. And Steve Cover right now has jumped into a 5-3 defense, which means that they have a middle linebacker stacked right over the nose guard who lines up on the center. And they're committing eight people to the run. Otters on their own 45-yard line now with a first down and 10. Barney comes wide to the short side. Grim Hall calls out the signals, gives it off to Larrabee, going wide, trying to turn it on at the 50, slips by Drees, cuts to the 40 and ahead to the 37-yard line, and a big 18-yard gain and another first down. Good job by Brian Larrabee. He's the type of kid that's great for what Steve Rivers is doing because they're cracked and so hard they don't have any contain out there and Larrabee has enough speed now to run with those corners and that time he was able to beat Drees to the corner and turn it upfield. Under six minutes to play in this third quarter. The Otters on the move at the Prowler 37-yard line. Erickson white to the near side. Hoppin and Larrabee, the split backs behind Brimhall. And the Otters are doing the damage on the ground. And here's Larrabee trying to come wide again, but he was tripped up. 
Lost. It went stagnant at the Otter 32 and was stopped on downs. The Otters started this drive on their own 32-yard line. This is the sixth snap of this drive, and Larrabee takes it, picks his way through the hole, and is spun down inside the 35 of the 34 by Radnicki. That'll be about a four-yard gain for Larrabee, and it will bring up third down. The Otters are using Larrabee extensively on their running game. That giant Thief River went to a 5-2 defense, and uh, the Otters were able to penetrate it for a few yards. Ball on the Prowler 34, third down at seven. You would think a passing down for the Otters. They're going to bring Erickson wide to the near side and put Arneson in the slot on the near side, and that will leave Larrabee as a lone setback on third down and seven. Grim Hall to throw. Looks left, fires. Erickson's got it on the sideline, and he is out of bounds at the 23-yard line. It's an Otter first down. Well, it's so difficult to defend these guys, especially Erickson and Arneson, because they have the ability to go deep on you. So... Arneson slot right, or wide right rather, Erickson slot right, Larravee the lone setback, first down from the 23-yard line, Brim Hall, they'll run a little delay, Larravee's got some room to the 15, and ahead to the 12-yard line, and he was close to breaking that one. Yes, he was, he had one guy to beat, it was very well executed. They made it look like pass, and then they came with the draw play to Larrabee going to the short side of the field. Great blocking on that left side by Ross Johnson and Horgan and Rudnick. 131 yards rushing now for Larrabee. The ball just shy of the Prowler 12-yard line. It is first down at 10 with under four minutes to play in the third. Clock running, taking time away. And on first down, Jacob Drevlo on the right tight end spot, Charlie Schoenhart on the left tight end spot, and we have a penalty flag thrown and a delay of game. Delay of game. Hmm. Folks, we don't want to self-destruct here, but the Otters have good momentum going, and uh, they might be able to overcome this five-yard penalty. Well, first down at 15 from the 17-yard line. Three and a half minutes left in this fast-paced third quarter of football. Each team has had the ball only once here in the third quarter. We've seen lots of running plays. Yes, we have. And the passes that have been uh, thrown have been completed. And that makes a big difference. Arnie to the right, Christensen to the left. Arnie's actually lined up as a, a wing on the right side. And Brimhall rolling right, gives it off to Larrabee, slips out of a tackle, cuts it back inside the 10 and down to about the 8-yard line. And a nice piece of running again by Larrabee. Uh, excellent running by Larrabee. It almost looks like they're trying to set up the option and uh, Brimhall held on to the football as long as he could before he gave it off to Larrabee. And then Brian did an excellent job of turning it upfield. Second and six from the eight-yard line with 2.45 on the clock, third quarter. Otters trail 14-13 to the Thief River Falls Prowlers on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. We'll get some score updates for you at our next break. Hillcrest was leading 6-0 over Wheaton, nearing halftime in that one. Now Larrabee cuts it back up the middle inside the five and down to about the two-yard line. He'll be close to the first down. Looks like where they're marking it on the far side, he will have the first down. Down. We do have a first down. Great inside running by Larrabee. Larrabee has really had an outstanding offensive game. He's been able to run inside the tackles. He's been ready or been able to run outside the ends. 146 yards rushing on 25 carries. So he's right at about six yards a carry. First down and goal from the two. Larravee, touchdown. And he has put the Otters out in front at 19-14 with a two-yard touchdown run. Now I would guess that you see definitely a two-point try here for the extra point. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good to get one point up there, make it 20 to 14. They'll try to make it 21-14. Two-yard run by Larravee. And the Otters have a 19 to 14 lead. 11 play drive, 68 yards, and the two-yard touchdown run by Brian Larravee. 
giving him 148 yards rushing and two touchdowns in this game. And the Otters taking too much time. River, 1 o'clock at the middle school soccer field. We'll have it for you on AM 1020. KJ Oldies tomorrow starting at 1240 with a free game show. Brim Hall under center. Back to pass. Looks to Erickson who makes the catch and the two-point conversion is successful. And with 2.02 remaining in this third quarter, it's the Otters 21. The Fowlers 14 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. We are back with the Otter kickoff in 60 seconds. He took it in from two yards out. Then Erickson from Brim Hall on the conversion. Low at the two-yard line. Brings it right to the 10. And the Otters will get him at the 15. Again, outstanding coverage on the kick return. That's how it was. And Justin Erickson, who was an outside pursuer, went down and did a nice job of breaking down, took on his blocker, and came up with a uh, very good tackle on the 15-yard line. So the minute 55 to go, the Paolo offense has 85 yards in front of them and seven points separating them from the Otters on the scoreboard. It's a beautiful night for football. Virtually no wind. Field is in great shape. And a very comfortable night for the fans out here. Bolger under center takes the snap. Wheel, second man through, has the ball. And Lowe is down at the 16-yard line that these guys are taking tonight. Second down and nine. Again, they go to that full house backfield. Havlin, the fullback in the middle. And now Bolger's going to throw off the field and he passes it out to Lowe, and Lowe does a nice job escaping some tackles, but he still only winds up with four yards. Not a running, but yeah. not a lot of uh, moving the down box. They came out and fired Lowe up in the flat. He was well covered again, but the defender forgot to look at the quarterback, see the football come, and Lowe was very alert, picked it up and tried to cut it back to the middle, and uh, was able to pick up four yards. It's third down and five now for the Prowlers, with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Otters lead it 21 to 14. And the cellular 2000 scoreboard is a Prowlers break the huddle. And with 30 seconds left, Bolger under center takes the snap, hands it off. Breeze is hit once, bounces off, gets a couple of yards. The Rods, you called it early on in this half, they are not going to let Breeze get the yardage off that play. No, nope, they're not. They're going to take away that, that off tackle play. And what the Otters have done is they've changed their defense. They brought in Jab Camp at a tackle spot, and now they're going with a 5-2, and they took one of the defensive backs off, uh, Brandon Oslin, and they said, we think that if we can stop their run, we're in better shape, because they don't respect the pass that much. The third quarter is over. The Otters score the only eight points. Well, Brian Lowe to punt now for the Prowlers. A high, high punt. Derrickson will field it, and he's been all over the place. On the 41-yard line, Timmy was able to fall on top of it. Yep, very good play by Tim Erickson. Gristovic is the outside declaration, and the key thing was, although he didn't catch it cleanly, he was able to control the ball, and the ball dropped directly below him. Viking football at noon on Sunday on AM 1250 KB. 11 o'clock pregame. Lions hosting the Vikes this Sunday. The handoff from Brim Hall to Laramie over the 45, out to the 48. And a gain of seven on first down. Once again, the Otters going to their running game, and it's been an outstanding running game. And the workhorse tonight is Brian Larvey. What a ball game this young man has had. 155 yards rushing. How many carries? He has carried the football, by my count, 27 times. That's a lot. That is a lot. Harness and wide to the right side. 11.20 to go. Second down and three. Otters lead by seven. Split backs. Brim Hall gives it off to Larrabee. Larrabee over the midfield stripe short of the first down. As the Prowlers did to make the tackle close to the 49-yard line. The uh, Prowlers are very, very quick off the defense, and you are playing a good defensive team here, and the, the Otters are keeping it on a couple of, well, they're two scoring drives. Third score came off a defensive touch. It's a triple I formation. And the handoff to the deep back in that triple I, and he doesn't get out of the backfield. In fact, loses two yards. Back at the auto 49-yard line, and that was a Larry. Larry had nowhere to go. That's a Nebraska power I, and uh, 
Steve Trevor took all 11 players and put them within four yards of the line of scrimmage, and they stacked it up the in the middle of big time. Second down, call it 11, as they do give Rarity some forward progress close to the 50-yard line. Ten minutes, 15 seconds to play in the ball game. Otters 21, Fowlers 14 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Arnie wide to the near side, Erickson wide left. They're going to run the little delay to Rarity, trying to come wide. Breaks it over the 50 to the 45, cuts it back to the 41-yard line. He'll be short of the first down by a yard or so, but a nice run. It certainly was. It was a, supposed to be a draw play going up the middle, but Brian Lovey has enough speed to beat the defensive end. On that particular play, Justin Arneson was the receiver on the side, and he came back and got a great block to allow Lovey to pick up another five yards. They're down in less than two yards to go for the first. Nine and a half minutes to play, fourth quarter. Carter's inside the Fowler 41-yard line. Erickson goes wide left. Well, Larravee and Osland are the running backs. And it will be Larravee again off the right side. Puts the head down and pounds inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Close to the first down. Very close to the first down. Those are tough yards. They're number 39. Lead 21 to 14 at the end of three. And they had an 11 play scoring drive the last time they had it. Now the crowd cheering as they come out of the huddle on fourth and inches. Grimhall has kept it in short yardage situations many times tonight. He does so again, and the surge will get him forward to the 38, and it will be an honor first down. Good safe call. You don't have to risk a fumble on the exchange. And that offensive line with uh, Rudnick, Anderson, and Jackson took care of the middle. You get into trouble when that defensive line gets penetration, but the offensive line wasn't going to let that happen on that fourth down play. 51 yards rushing now for Brimhall in this game. Honors come up first down at the 38 to the Fowlers. Down to eight and a half minutes remaining in this game. Larrabee and Oslin to split max. And Brimhall with that count draws the Fowlers into the neutral zone and will have a five yard mark off against the Fiver, their first penalty of the second half. They have a new man in at that nose, number 34, Paul Leister. And he's the one in particular that should be jumping because the football is right in front of his eyes. But he's an anxious young man and he jumped into the neutral zone. First down and five now at the 33-yard line of Thief River. Barney goes wide to the left side. Grimhall has thrown nine passes tonight, has completed four of them for 45 yards. On first and five, here's Larrabee going wide. Trying to cut back inside the blocker, and he stopped at the 31-yard line after a gain of two. Big River Falls, of course, have got to get everything figured out. They're still stunning. They're slashing their hands, but then they got a linebacker that's coming to the outside because they know that Brian Larrabee has the speed to turn the corner. And it will bring up third down, or second down, rather, at about four, with seven and a half minutes to play. Erickson wide right. And Osland and Willoughby are the split backs behind Brimhall. Ben takes a snap from Caleb Rudnick, hands the ball off. Willoughby cuts it back to the 25-yard line and auto first down and a gain of six more. Brian Willoughby has done a, such an outstanding job of seeing daylight tonight. What time he plays the run off tackle and he runs it over the guard. Just clean in this game. Otters 21, Fowlers 14 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. And Brimhall under center. Takes the snap. Here comes Larrabee again. He is met by that new nose guard and dropped for a yard loss. And good penetration, good read by Leister. Leister shot a gap. And he was able to second half and really all night. This second half, the Otters have really controlled the things by keeping the ball in their hands of their offense. Offense. On second down at 11 from the 26-yard line. There's the handoff once again, and 
there. They will move inside the 25 and down to about the 23-yard line for three tough yards. Well, the running is getting very, very difficult at this point because of the fact that Keith Lillard knows that the Otters want to keep the clock going and their chances of throwing a pass are slim. Now you're in a passing situation, and uh, you'll see a little bit different look on their defense. Under six minutes to play in the football game. It is third down at eight. Line of scrimmage, the Fowler 23. Erickson, the receiver, flanked to the right side. He'll be the man on the pattern. Grimhall looks for him, down inside the 10. He makes a catch, and he scores the touchdown. Tim Erickson toward the corner. What a great pass by Grimhall. You have one man out on a route, and Tim Erickson went into triple coverage, took the guy inside, and went out on the slant, adjusted to the ball when it was thrown. That pass was picked off early in the game, folks. But this time, Tim Erickson was the smartest player on that play, and he came back, got the football, and into the end zone. And it is now 27 to 14. The Otters lead it on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. And Luke Jackson will kick out of the hold of Matt Johnson to try to make it 28 to 14. Double that Fowler score. Good snap. Placement is there. Oh, and the block kick. Boy, Zach Olson, the safety defensively, came right up through a gap on that offensive line. Nobody picked him up. He just timed it right. He said, oh, yeah, he hurdled that line. And Jackson had no chance of even trying to make that play. So our score on the cellular 2000 scoreboard with 5.36 remaining in the ballgame. It's the Otters 27 and the Prowlers 14. We're back with the body to improve blood flow, accelerate healing, and stimulate the nervous system to block pain sensations. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy has magnetic therapy bracelets for men and women. And copper, gold, or silver. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy. 410 West Lincoln, Fergus Falls. Uh, Brian Lowe returning the kickoff and bringing it out to the 26-yard line where he is uh, run into by uh, a whole number of otters. And Dries, who had 113 yards on nine carries in the first half, has 12 on five carries in the second half. Again, the I formation under five minutes to play, and it will be Dries out of the tailback spot over the 30 to the 32-yard line, winning about three or four yards on that play. Caleb Bloodnick is having a very fine game at linebacker. He's doing a nice job of reading and coming up and, and taking on the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. It's third down at four from the 32-yard line. Four and a half minutes left. The Fowlers don't seem to have much urgency here, Roger. Four and a half minutes on the clock. Taking a lot of time back in the huddle. Boy, they're taking a long time back there. I don't like it. The biggest enemy here for the Otters is the clock. They're going to have a delay here. Let's take a timeout. Jeff Mum is not happy. Well, Four fifteen left the power. Twenty to thirteen. Staples over a Purim. It's twenty-eight zip DL over Park Rapids. And that's the updates that we have for you on the scoreboard at this time. And here's Drees, and he'll run into the secondary, up to midfield to the 45-40. And they chase him down. Hoffman and can't get him. Erickson's got an angle and knocks him out of bounds inside the 10. Mr. Drees is having a big night again against Curtis Falls. The time he ran out of the eye with a blast over the 56 yards on that carry by Drees. To the eight-yard line, first down and goal with 4.03 to go. Crowley's showing they're not out of this thing yet. Out of the eye formation, Bulger brings him up to the line on first down. There's Dries again, and he is caught as he tried to make his cut. And it was Cannon Kildee who wrapped him up along the way, stopped him after a short game of about two. Now, when Duke River runs out of the eye, they only have two offensive backs in there. They brought in a another lineman, so they have four linemen to the right of the center and three linemen to the left of the center. And, of course, they're running power football. They're trying to overload that one side. Second down and goal at the six-yard line with three and a half minutes to play in the football game. 
We come out again in that I formation. Raise the tail back, and Bulger wants to throw. He's hit from behind as he lets it go. It's an incomplete pass, and we have a penalty flight called. A thrown and a... We have a holding call here. Yeah, I have no idea. Now, uh, the flag was thrown in the area of David Karst and Greaves, and I don't know if they ended up uh, getting tangled up, and the Otters are going to get a holding call. I think that might be... Uh, are they going to say an inadvertent uh, strike? Yep. They're going to wave it off. We're going to wave it off. They're going to catch up the ball here. Uh, fair like, I don't know. And somebody forgot to go get the football. Kind of have that. That is an important piece of what we're working with here. So now it's third down and goal from the six-yard line. Three minutes and 16 seconds remaining. And now we have the timeout taken by the Otters. Sellers with a big run by Nick Breeze of 56 yards, putting them right down in scoring territory again. Breeze has 187 yards rushing, and the ball rests on the Otters. Six-yard line it is third down and goal. And it is Breeze with the handoff off the right side and he'll be down inside the three close to the two yard line for a gain of four more and it will bring up a fourth down and two. That time three people had the unbalanced line to the left side and they went with Breeze and brought him to the weak side where they only had three blockers but it still wasn't enough to uh, get it in. Two minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the, in the ball game and the Otters lead by 13. Here it is, fourth down and two. Drees right side. The Otters make contact and they keep him out of the end zone. They come up with a big stop inside the one yard line. They certainly did. They went to that other side over there and you had Mr. Uh, Campion and, and Caleb Rudnick that came up with the hit. Now Chad Campion has played that down spot for the second half and he's a big force. He's 300 pounds at six foot two. So the Otters, yeah, that's, that's a big force. The Otters will, uh, I'd like to see him do what the refrigerator did a couple of times. They'll carry the ball down there, you know, sometime. It might happen sometime in the future. I don't know. Ball on the one for the Otters with two and a half minutes left in the ball game, And this is not fun to try to negotiate in this territory. And Bim Hall wants a timeout. He's six tomorrow. You play defense like that, anything can happen. It'll keep you in the game. Well, the Otters now down at the one-yard line, their own one-yard line, leading 27-14 to 14 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard and just trying to get some room to move, and Brimhall will get it out close to the five-yard line. Good play by Brimhall. If you're the quarterback and you've got your feet in the end zone, that's not a fun spot to be. Now he's out on the five-yard line, and so his feet are going to be in the four-yard line, and you just have a little bit more comfort to your spot on the field. Seems like you have a lot more breathing room then. Boy, the honor defense coming up big on that fourth down and two. Fowlers could have gotten back to within a touchdown, but now it's very, very difficult to come back. Brimhall will hand the ball off. And no gain and a timeout immediately here. Okay. I think it was a guess anyway, huh? Yep. He's up. And about six for the first. But the Otters do have a 13-point lead here. So you have a little, uh, little room for error, although you don't want to make it exciting down the stretch here if you're the Otters. Bowers helping to hold and get the ball back and strike quickly. And Brimhall's going to just keep it, go straight ahead, get a yard, and be ridden down to the turf at the six-yard line, and then the Otters will be punting the football. This is a spot you don't want to go with the option play and make the pitch and don't handle the pitch, so right now you're very conservative on the quarterback seat. In on the cellular 2000 scoreboard and trying to... Now looking back here, the last time uh, Arnie punted, he only punted once tonight, and that was on the very first possession of the ball game. Otters have had three turnovers tonight, and then they've scored three offensive touchdowns, so only the second time Arnie has punted, he'll line up in the end zone to kick it away. Low snap, he bobbles, he gets the kick away. It is a short kick, it will hit at the 25, roll over the 30, and be downed at the 30-yard line. So the Powers 
certainly have good start. They have not thrown deep except on one occasion when the receiver was open and dropped the ball. Bolger a little down and out pattern, and the coverage is right there, and he's stuck immediately, and it's incomplete. David Karski's out covering the flat, and he was right on Zach Olson as the ball was tossed to him, and it was just a down and out right at the line of scrimmage. Karski came up and made the hit. Causing the uh, incomplete pass. One minute, 36 seconds remaining. The Otters trying to go to six and one with a victory here. Crowlers would go to four and three with a loss. And the Otters will play at Bemidji Wednesday with an opportunity with a victory to get the number one seed. Because of the rating system, the points that you get for beating a 5 team, they could get the number one seed, even though they've lost to Detroit Lakes. So over the middle, to the 21-yard line, and it will be short of the first down. Marnie right there on the coverage as the tight end Nate Sorvig made the catch. Sorvig just came right across the middle and the ball is tossed and Harrison wraps it up and makes the tackle. They had to stop the clock to move the chain. See, I said he didn't get first down and he did again. I'm going to start saying everything is a first down. Ten yard gain at the 20. Bulger to throw and it is incomplete. Second down. Yeah, we just want to stop the clock and get organized here and huddle up and get a another play on the sideline. A minute 23 remaining in the football game. Otters trailed 6-0 after 1, 14-13 at the half. Took the lead at 21-14 after 3. And have added 6 here to make it 27-14. to 14. The sack would uh, be huge in a situation because then the clock keeps going and Pete Weber has to scramble back to get lined up and take a lot of time off the clock for the sack. On second and ten, Bulger straight drop back, pressure up the middle, there it is. Boy, what a call by Raj. Ross Johnson just manhandled his blockers and dropped Bulger for a loss back to the 27-yard line. He really came through that gap. And he just did it with a bull rush. And it's a loss of seven yards. That is the first sack of the night for either side. And now it is third down and 17 for the 27 with a minute 10 left. Roger, quick pass over the middle. It is caught inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line. Gain of about eight on that play. Just a little dump pass. The officials stopped the clock there to allow Fergus Falls to get an injured player off the field. And typically the clock would not be stopped in that situation. Well, the reception was made by Paul Leister, who was in there at a receiver spot. Picked up eight yards, and now it's fourth down. They throw a little swing pass out for Dries, and he'll be tackled for a loss of about three yards on that play. I think it was Oslin, wasn't it? I can't tell for the children as number. No, it's Levy. 30. Ryan the, Levy. The defensive end. The defensive end. He went with the receiver who released to the sideline and uh, came up with a tackle big time. So now the Otters get possession on their own 20-yard line. Or 20. Yeah, 20-yard line. It'll be first down with 34 seconds to go, and they'll be able to kill it off. And the Otters, with a victory at Bemidji, Raj will claim that number one seed, and what they have done tonight is guaranteed a number two seed. And, yeah, this has been a huge game for both teams, and the Otters came out here in the second half, and they showed the way earned the win. Jim Hall will just take a knee. And he shouldn't have to, well, let's see. They won't have to snap it again, will they? Uh, I don't think so. I'm going to place the ball now and carry them to the victory. 27 to 14 on the cellular 2000 scoreboard. Our final score to them out. You can ask for cellular technology. catches, including a 23-yard touchdown, and then Arneson at 25 yards on. It's family fitness. Same location, different door, and double the size. Have fun. Win prizes at the ever-popular Stop and Go Pick the Bullet Contest.